All right, this is video 22. I'm calling it Culture of Poverty. That was also the name of exercise 21. Um, and it's a phrase that comes up in the chapter Lobster on Food Stamps. Uh, that and a couple of related phrases like a poverty mindset and that sort of thing. Um, and so uh, in this video, I just want to talk about the, this idea of a uh, culture of poverty or a poverty mindset and put it in the context of Desmond's overall understanding of the socioeconomics of poverty. So this is the passage that the title of the chapter uh, comes from. Lorraine um, uh, has gotten a little bit of money, right? Uh, and uh, she decides not to put anything on layaway that day. But when her food stamps kicked in, she went to a grocery store and bought two lobster tails, shrimp, king crab legs, salad, and lemon meringue pie. Bringing it all back to Beaker's tailor, she, trailer, she added Cajun seasoning to the crab legs and cooked the lobster tails in lemon butter at 350 degrees. She ate everything alone, in a single sitting, washing it down with Pepsi. The meal consumed her entire monthly allocation of food stamps. It was her and Glenn's anniversary, and she wanted to do something special. I know our relationship may, may not have been good, but it was our relationship, she said. Some things I will never get over, but the lobster helped. Glenn, you'll remember, is Lorraine's late boyfriend, and his death in prison started the downward spiral of depression that uh, brought her uh, to the place she is now. So Lorraine's friends and family don't actually approve of this kind of behavior. So this is her niece. My Aunt Lorraine is one of those people who will see some $200 beauty cream that removes her wrinkles and go buy it instead of paying her rent. I don't know why she doesn't stick to a budget. Pastor Darrell feels the same way, saying that Lorraine was careless with her money because she operated under a poverty mentality. Um, Lorraine herself does a bit to explain what she's doing, uh, in the paragraph immediately before the lobster on food stamps paragraph. Um, she's considering buying a big TV. She's not going to sell her jewelry in order to pay her uh, rent. And so this is what she says. Of course, I'm not going to do that. I work too hard for me to sell my jewelry. Uh, I'm not going to sell my life savings because I'm homeless or, or I got evicted. So here's the next thing. Lorraine imagined she would be poor and rent-strapped forever, and if that was her lot in life, she might as well have a little jewelry to show for it. She loved perfume, skipping down a little, and could tell you what a woman was wearing after passing her on the sidewalk. Even people like myself, we too deserve something brand new. All right. Um, I want to mention right away uh, the fact that Lorraine views, and perhaps rightly, uh, th thinks that she will be poor and rent-strapped forever. That right there discourages a, s <laughs> a certain amount of savings, right? And so that's why I had you read this essay by Samantha Irby. If every day is a rainy day, what am I saving for? So this is Samantha Irby writing um, in that. I know I should have invested in a sturdy pair of one of those bootstraps people who speak at graduation ceremonies are always talking about. But what does that even mean? Pay the rent, throw some cash at a phone bill, sprinkle a little charge on the light bill, and divide the remaining 20 bucks between a laundromat and a stock portfolio? It all seems so unreasonable. And the years of being deprived or feeling stressed out about money didn't make me want to save, they made me want to spend, to immediately enjoy the fruits of the two, the seven twenty-five an hour I made listening to people talk down to me in a customer service job. So, that's at least part of what's going on here, right? 
Um, you don't, uh, people like Lorraine or Samantha Irby, or at least for a while, Samantha Irby, before she became a famous writer, don't see the chance that, you know, saving will pay off. And they do wind up with a powerful need for some satisfaction, given the daily grinds that they're subjected to. This is one of uh, yet another great footnote, footnote four in this chapter. Um, this is one rare moment in the text where uh, uh, the, the main body of the text where Desmond mentions himself. Normally, he only talks about his role in this story um, in the very end, in the about this book section. Otherwise, he keeps himself out of the picture. But um, this is he does provide this bit of dialogue between himself and Lorraine. When I write about this, it's going to be a little hard for some people to understand, I said. You're going to put this in this book? Yeah, I'm sorry. You're going to put this in your book, Lorraine asked. Yeah, I think so. And they'll say, what is she doing? She got evicted. She evicted. She's practically homeless. She's living with her brother. And who knows um, how that'll go. Um, and then I'm just skipping down to Lorraine's reply here. Well, they don't have to understand it. I don't understand a lot of uh, uh, things other people do, but they do it. And then on the next page, right after um, uh, what you're looking at on the screen here, Desmond says, what would you say to them if they were sitting right there and they are, were saying, Lorraine, how could you do such a thing? I would say because I wanted to. So Desmond does give his overall understanding of what's going on here. Um, a little bit later in the body of the text. So this is what he says. To Sammy, Pastor Darrell, and others, Lorraine was poor because she threw money away. But the reverse was more true. Lorraine threw money away because she was poor. So this is, this is important because this is an example of something that we see frequently in Des Desmond's writing, which is a feedback cycle between two harmful things, right? But in this case, he, Desmond is asserting that one part of the feedback cycle is far more powerful than the other. So imagine it this way. We have, we have two facts. Lorraine is poor. Lorraine throws money away. And these are both things that um, Desmond just states pretty frankly. When he says the reverse is more true, what he means is that there's one arrow of causation that's much stronger than the other. Lorraine is poor causes Lorraine to throw money away. And that direction of causation is much stronger, so I've represented it here with a much larger arrow, than the thing that Pastor Darrell talks about which is that Lorraine uh, throws money away and that causes her to be poor, right? Um, what we see in a lot of uh, the body of this book is harmful feedback cycles. And so I just want to take a second to highlight some of those. I also have an exercise on these. Um, so in the Desmond and Gersension article, we talked about, they talked about eviction and job loss, right? So it's true. Losing your job can lead you to be evicted. But what's actually even more common is that eviction can lead to job loss. Um, and so this is another feedback cycle. It may not necessarily play out within one individual, but it plays out in a community. And actually, again, Desmond thinks that one direction of the causation is stronger than the other. Um, um, and yet it's the weak one that only people pay attention to. So you could go back to this diagram and replace Lorraine is poor and Lorraine throws money away with eviction and job loss, where um, eviction is a bigger driver of job loss than job loss is for eviction. 
but there are other feedback cycles and some of them he talks about casually some of them he goes into more detail about and they're all things that you can immediately think about when you think about the lives of the people he's discussing poverty and drug use eviction and drug use eviction and crime um actually we see a lot of the eviction and crime cycle um and the list just goes on and on you can see all these feedback cycles at work so when people like pastor daryl talk about a poverty mentality or a culture of poverty they're generally referring to behaviors that help keep poor people poor and so uh, blowing all of your food stamp money on a single meal is that kind of behavior now it's important to note that desmond doesn't deny that this exists he recognizes that um a, a a a poverty mindset or a poverty mentality is something that happens out there he just doesn't think it's as big a driver as people like pastor daryl do and so in another footnote on this section <clears throat> he talks about why he goes into detail about these things so he says there's an old liberal tradition uh ignoring the nastier more embarrassing aspects of poverty so a more traditional liberal might not mention the fact that lorraine blows a, a whole um months worth of food stamps money on one meal but desmond doesn't do that liberal commentators and researchers need to take a hard look at um uh, sorry liberal commentators and researchers do not take a hard look at these aspects of poverty they can only apologize for them um to avoid describing a behavior that might be construed as unflattering or stigmatizing right um i they right they want to uh they want to avoid doing that because it might render liberal arguments ineffective um but desmond says there are always two ways to dehumanize one is to strip people of all virtue and the other is to cleanse them of all sin so what he's doing here is saying especially um look the people i'm describing are making mistakes and he's just trying to put those mistakes in 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 context so um the last footnote here that i thought was good was um about breaking this cycle would people behave differently if they were provided a real opportunity to break out of poverty there is good reason to expect as much right um that is when people do get the opportunity to break out of this feedback cycle because they um get some money enough money they do manage to save right so this actually gets back to the article we read called the privilege of buying 36 rolls of toilet paper a month that was a summary article and then i had you read the full article um which was about how frugal which was called frugality is hard to afford um the point of those articles was that um most things that you can do to save money actually require you to already have some money to save for instance buying toilet paper in bulk and but what the researchers found is that people uh, low income people actually do use these strategies when they become available it's not all lobster on food stamps um even though that can be uh, that is an understandable response so that says that it is possible um to create the circumstances where people can break out of this cycle of poverty although it may require more than simply just self-reliance so later on he talks uh desmond says a recent study found that more than 40 percent of parents who received an earn earned income tax credit of over a thousand dollars saved a considerable portion of the refund and almost 85 percent used the refund to address debt 
So this, the earned income tax credit was a government intervention that gave people the opportunity to do more than just um, satisfy an immediate need for lobster um, and save money, and, and they did. So we get back to our causal cycle. Poverty causes um, poor decision-making much more than poor decision-making causes poverty. That says that there is an intervention that can be done here, and it's not chastising people for poor decision-making. It is addressing the stronger cause of the two, which is the poverty itself.